up guys up in the uh, woods today I uh, got this beautiful white pine that I've climbed a few times it's got a lot of uh, codominant stems very many and just gonna go for a fun little climb I got some of my more or I guess the only more recreational thing I have is my climbing rope but I was just gonna highlight do this is kind of like a not really a vlog but more of a gear highlight reel of kind of like five things that I've really been enjoying this winter uh, doing a lot of rec climbing and practicing some techniques but uh, yeah I'll get set up in this and I'll take you with me in the climb up. One of the uh, first things that I want to highlight is uh, I just made this new uh, knee ascender for myself. Uh, it's a press Petzl Kroll large uh, chest ascender just so that I can go all the way up to 13 millimeter ropes. But uh, I would highly recommend just making one for yourself. The Sokka ones and things like that are really smooth. But the thing I love about these is I've gotten a, the chance to use, I think, a regular Sokka one. But uh, what I didn't like about them is that to achieve that kind of like good return with that bungee that runs all the way through the system, you, uh, that whole thing has to be stiff and provide a channel for it to run through. But this works just, like, this works really great for me. I'm super happy with this. This is just some elastic I got from the sewing store. This isn't really load-bearing webbing. You could sew it or just easily tie it. All this could have been done with knots. I just made it a little bit cleaner by sewing it, even though it's probably not all that strong. Definitely not life support. But the thing I love about this is when I, uh, clip it all together it just takes up such a little amount of space this can just be stashed on my harness so easily and not run into stuff I also made myself this foot loop I got I got to work on this a little bit more just a spot to clip onto on my foot but this one's all right but still works just fine made it all uh, the only thing I had to buy was the ascender so you know saved about 50% of the price as if I would have bought one of those knee ascenders new but that just works so well. Two things I'll kind of highlight here. Here I'm using some 10 millimeter Sterling HTP, which has a really great rec line. Technically, I think it meets the uh, load bearing stand standards for ANSI uh, 71 or ANSI Z133. Because <sighs> I think it breaks at like 5,900 pounds. But, you know, it's a little small. It's uh, probably a little bit too small to be used. Uh, realistically but uh, yeah since this stuff I really love it for climbing because it's so static uh, you're not supposed to use it in a double rope system I'm just using it to kind of uh, lanyard my way up this tree and spider climb but uh, you know it's super hard to tie in a knot because it's it's a really tight weave and it's all polyester uh, so using this awesome metal splicing technique. I, I love this instead of doing like an anchor bend or anything to this because it's so easy to untie when you're done using it and want to transition into something else. Yeah, uh, if you're watching this, uh, yeah, please check out my uh, tree stuff video in that community competition and give it a like. Uh, any any help is appreciated, or I don't know. Yeah, if you learned anything, uh, please support me with that. But yeah, I love I love doing this. Uh, when I use this rope, this is how I always base anchor with this rope. This isn't a very long rope. It's only 88 feet or something like that. But yeah, this uh, this system's pretty nice. Uh, and something else I've really been uh, finding a love for is uh, they're pretty much only Kern Mantle ropes that do this. But say I think this is a 20 uh, uh, strand or a 20 carrier strand, but it has 40 individual strands. It's just, uh, they're braided in doubles. And something about braiding in doubles, one, it makes the rope uh, a lot smoother, but also it's a lot harder for it to get caught on stuff. It does wonders for its abrasion resistance. And when it does uh, start to abrade a little bit, uh, it, it just gets lightly fuzzy. It's not like, like I hate like blue moon and poison ivy. Like if you catch it with anything, you get a huge puff in the rope, even if you've only like damaged one strand. Uh, and it looks horrifying. You're just like, oh, I got to replace that right away. And, you know, you probably should. But on this, like, I've never seen just an individual strand cut. I've just seen it get a little bit fuzzy, unless it's completely core shot. 
but there are so many great ropes like this. You got HGP, you got Work Pro, you got uh, that Notch uh, Dragon rope, and then uh, another rope I just ordered, which is that uh, uh, Yale Phantom, which I'm super excited to get my hands on and splice. But yeah, this doubled uh, strand idea, just so fantastic for abrasion and longevity of the ropes. I always remember to back this splice up because it's not something used to prove blah, blah, blah. You know, I always back up your knots, but yeah. If I, I wish I had a captive thingy. I, I have some, but I forgot to throw one on this carabiner for today. But yeah, let's do some spider climbing. Check this out too. This is something I love so much. I've had it for a long time. So something that I find really important when you're spider climbing or, you know, you're not a slow work positioning. It's more dynamic note. You know, you're making movements where you could induce a dynamic fall, which, you know, it's not great that I'm using just static ropes for this. But should you find yourself in a position where you might induce a dynamic fall, you want you want everything to be operated easily with only one hand. See, I can hold myself here. If I fall, I'm not gonna fall far, but I'd really like to not fall. So I'd like to be able to use only one hand to do everything. So uh, rope snaps work great, but this is a black diamond magneto or magnetron. This is not designed for tree climbing and I do not think is classified as a double locking carabiner, but you do have these two magnetic tangs that have to be squeezed to open and open the gate of the carabiner. Uh, but that allows it to be operated super easily with one hand. I would consider it maybe like a one and a half action locking carabiner. You know, it's better than a carabiner, like one of these slide locking ones. I mean, this is double action, but better than, you know, one that just twists. But it's not quite as good as like the second action to push it up and use it. But I don't know. I like it. I like using it. The only thing I will say about using these magnetron carabiners is a shortcoming uh, I've experienced in the past is that, uh, I'll show you this real quick once I get lanyarded in up here, uh, is that, so if we look at the construction of these, you're probably not gonna be able to see this, I'll have to insert a picture with the camera, but there is a space back here that is open when the tangs are closed and is completely shut when you press them open. Uh, the problem here is I have used this as like the end of my main climbing line, kind of like this. And then when I've been doing SRT, just cinched it off around the tree and descended. And one time it got stuck and I could not get it open. And the reason I couldn't get it open is because it had dragged across the side of the tree and a piece of wood had just really gotten wedged in there. And I didn't realize that. I left it for like months and I was like, man, this thing was like 25 bucks and now it's broken. And I just kind of beat it on the ground for a while. And then that uh, piece of wood popped out. I spotted it in there. So good for a lanyard. Would not recommend on the end of your line if you're the kind of person who likes just cinching your line off for SRT. But yeah, use this on my double rope systems a lot and on my lanyarding system. It's a pretty chilly out. How are we doing? It still says 75% battery, but uh, usually I don't get anything from this camera when it's a little bit chilly out. It's probably like 12 degrees right now. Thankfully no wind, very lovely and still. But uh, yeah, I'm glad this video is working out so far. Uh, I'll talk about a few more things once I get set up to play around a little bit. But uh, yeah, let's keep climbing. Example of uh, when it's nice to be able to use this method or a one-handed carabiner, you know. You can open a double locking carabiner with one hand, but it can be pretty difficult. You know, I'm standing maybe. I would have probably like a three foot total fall, maybe slightly greater. But super nice to have a carabiner you can open and close with one hand. And I do trust this carabiner a little bit more than rope snaps. And your spider climbing eye is nice to 
tie off a loop of your main climbing line so you can easily pay out slack and not be picking up all that rope weight. Super nice to have a, a 10 millimeter rope to rec climb with as opposed to a, a even 12 millimeter rope. That, that rope weight will kill you when you're spider climbing. Such a pain, you know. Here it's kind of a big move, so I'll just stand back in my lanyard the way you're probably supposed to do. And pop this bad boy on. Looks like I need a little bit more slack. It's a nice thing about doing it with a clove hitch, or Prusik would be better. Can pay out more slack if I need to. There we go. <laughs> this is not a good tree climbing lanyard. I have some <laughs> tape protecting the sewing. But since I'm not using it for work, not too worried about it. It's designed for rope access and designed to hold all of your weight, not just half of it, like in a lanyard system. So it ought to be more than plenty for rec climbing. Yep. If you, uh, if you still want a double locking carabiner for your uh, lanyard and you're looking for recommendations, Rock Exotica is the way to go because these DMM ones, you got to lift up to twist and that's common with most double locking, whereas the Rock Exotica, you pull down and twist, which is much more intuitive to do with only one hand. It's really hard, like you can get it with one hand, especially after some practice, but even with the practice I've had, these are way easier to take off with one hand than these are. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna put my base tie like here, and then I'll be switching to an SRT system and just tossing it over the limbs as I go up so I can play down there. I'll probably only direct my SRT through those and then down. But I'll get to show you another one of my favorite things that I've been working with here. So another method I've been using a lot is the uh, kind of a adjustable flint locker style system. Uh, saw this on the Country Boy Papa's uh, Instagram. And this is a super great technique. Basically, you're creating a base anchor uh, high in the canopy, meaning that your main tie-in point is above where this anchor is, or your redirected point is above where this anchor is. So it works like a basal anchor, the nice thing about placing this is that you're not dealing with all that slack that goes all the way down to the base of the tree. So if you're climbing, say, a 100-foot tree and you set this 80 feet up, then you don't have to deal with that 80 feet of slack that'd be going down to the bottom, which if you have a more dynamic rope is incredibly nice. Uh, so to use this anchor system, uh, particularly the anchor system that I've created here, this is a, uh, a homemade uh, system that I made by splicing some 24 strand uh, onto a steel ring which I would recommend you use steel if you're using a DMM thimble like I am because it's a steel thimble so they'll resist wearing against each other but it's a large ring which I did to make retrieval easier but this does mean that uh, you have to get this tight on the trunk due to the fact that the DMM thimble is uh, smaller than this ring so it can pass through the ring so to keep retrieval uh, problemless and easier, you have to tighten. This is why you need an adjustable friction saver. Not as great of an idea to just use a ring and ring, because this way, uh, when it tightens up all the way, the rings aren't touching. Uh, now you could just use something like a soft date to do this. Uh, the reason I would recommend this system 
is because with a soft eight, uh, you'd be going around the whole trunk to the soft eight, which, which can make retrieval a little bit harder when you're going up through and redirecting everything. So this way, uh, this is what uh, Country Boy Papa pointed out. Sorry, I don't know your, your name yet. But uh, is that if the rope's only deflected this small point through the anchor, then uh, it'll make retrieval a lot easier, especially if you place this system through a lot of redirects. I'm only really gonna be placing it through one, but you know, pulling it through a lot of obstructions down to the ground. So I got my Alpine Butterfly on here, and then I'm gonna back up the system and make the system retrievable uh, with the bat splice, if I have enough left here. Let's see if I have enough. Looks a little bit messed up, but that's my retrieval system. Beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, to make that retrievable, I'm just gonna put a throw line on it. Usually, I would recommend a tag line, but I didn't wanna carry a bunch of stuff in my pack because I was planning on climbing somewhere else. So I'm just gonna use a throw line. Now I could have had this set up just so that I could just place the rope wrench on the tether on my existing system, but I've been liking playing with this system just to get used to how I'm going to want to use it when I get the ISC uh, stiff squirrel tether, which is kind of an all-in-one system. I do like having the rope wrench on just a quickie so that I can toss it on a hitch climber system easily but I, I'm just trying to get used to this more compact way of running the rope wrench. But this is something I want to highlight is I've been having a lot of fun with the rope wrench and I've had a lot of fun ever since I got it. Even though when I got my rope runner, I was giving that a little bit more love. Oh, come on. Also, these DMM Rhino pulleys, they're like small. I, I was thinking about getting an ISC HMS uh, carabiner. I meant carabiner when I talked about this. But it was a little bit big, too big, or much bigger than I wanted. Whereas this DMM Rhino is so small and you know, it's got that signature Rhino bump, so I can't push over here. And that's the other, that's the nice thing about these auto lockers needing to be pushed up, is so that if the system shifts this way, on a Rock Exotica, it would begin to open the gate. Whereas on the DMM, it's just forcing it closed so that that slider can't go up. So love that. This is like the perfect pull, or this is the perfect carabiner for a, uh, rope wrench system but yeah the rope wrench ever since I bought it I've had it probably like three years now or something but uh, it works on like all ropes that's the thing I cannot like praise this enough for is its versatility like the smallest rope I've ever used this on was when I was uh, taking photos rock climbing on the North Shore and I was uh, climbing on a 9.6 millimeter canyoning rope and I had just an eight millimeter Prusik in my rope wrench and a small CMI pulley. And that was, that was wonderful. I loved it so much. I liked it more than my Grigri only because I could run it with one hand, which was super nice. I wasn't like working multi-pitch. Like if I were doing something multi-pitch, I would pr m more likely use a Grigri just because of its versatility coming on and off the rope. But using the rope wrench uh, on only a single leg is so nice so love this device and then it allows you to use foot ascenders and a, a knee ascender system so great but yeah so now i'll just climb up and i'll pass the rope wrench around things and that'll be my way to safely ensure my ascent so instead of uh spider climbing now i'll just be redirecting on my way up You just gotta, ooh, broke a little branch house standing on there. But since you have this canabase, even with like a very small redirecting system on it, you gotta somehow immobilize it, you know, stick your foot on it so your slack that you're introducing into the system can't just pass down to the ground, which I wish that was prevented somehow. You know, you get the same problem using a base anchor, but whatever. I'll pull all this crap through when I get up to the top. Looking good. I've only had, using this cannabis system, 
I've only ever once had an issue actually retrieving my uh, uh, ring saver. So it's worked really well for me thus far. And I've been super, super happy about that. Here we are topping out this white pine. And like white pines are like the nastiest of the nasty. This is where I'd expect to get it stuck. But the last couple times I've used this system, it's worked just great. All right, so now final redirect. Stamp my foot against it so that the rope won't go down as I introduce slack. crap through. If you're in like an oak or something, these redirects would pass through which with much greater ease. Also, I'm going to be playing on the interior of the tree, so I'll let this fall through. Also, I placed through a couple redirects before I did this. This is what uh, kind of got me away from the rope wrench system for a while because of uh, using 200 foot ropes on trees that are only so tall. It was just exhausting pulling all this crap up i've i've generated a lot more love for this system by oh dear kind of damaged the bark there pulling it over but uh yeah using shorter rope systems that i've grown to love uh it makes a lot more sense to be using a redirecting system like this because you don't have to pull quite as much rope through to get done what you want to get done and I love that. Sometimes even carrying two ropes, so you have a tag line, since you don't need to be the rated all the way down to the ground, or a throw line like I've done here. But yeah, always, always messing around, learning fun new stuff. But yeah, look at our view from up here. We're not on the other side of the hill, so we don't have the lake, but this is quite lovely. Yeah, becoming more and more love with the rope wrench every day. It's, uh, we definitely use it for rescue and uh, rock climbing situations. Limited, but yeah. Oh, tree climbing though, oh, this bad boy shines. So let's go play around on the interior a little bit. <sighs> Oop, forgot I was standing on that. Let some slack back through. <sighs> There we go, there's our system. Uh, I might adjust this because I don't like that the thimble's touching my ring there. But yeah, this, this system is so great. So much love for this. But yeah, those are, that's my gear that I'm, I've been excited with this winter. The, uh, playing around with the rope wrench, loving my uh, Black Diamond Magnetron. This uh, DMM mini bat plate, it's so great. Uh, what else did I talk about? I don't know. Oh, this current mantle ropes just in general, so beautiful. Uh, I'd love to get my hands on some of those current ropes. I just haven't pulled the trigger and bought anything for Maple Leaf. Plus, I was more excited to play with Kern Master when I was so confused why people would keep talking about double braid splices with it and then I finally found out that it has a braided core and I was so incredibly excited just wanted to play with it so bad so especially when they came out with hot pink was not digging the fact that the original uh, phantom Kern master rope was uh, green I do not like green ropes at work I use one because that's what they gave me but I don't like stuff that's gonna blend in with the tree I'm not trying to be camouflage out here I like to be able to see my gear, see what it's resting over, 
know that I'm safe. So when they came out with that hot pink Kern Master, I was like, oh, been waiting so long to see it. Finally it showed up and I was like, I, I gotta have some of that. That's beautiful. So yeah, look, rope wrench works beautifully with uh, Kern Mantle ropes. You know, the rope runner is super fun, but uh, you know, you can't use it with more recreationally oriented ropes, which is definitely a downfall there. But uh, rope wrench, baby just a friction addition device doesn't even need any tuning and it works just great and the best part is you know it's not life support so you you know keep an eye on how it's doing but really all you're relying on is your hitch the life support part you replace uh, whenever you need to hitches you know what like 30 20 30 bucks uh, if you're buying sewn or splice ones but oh that's just fantastic you know whenever it Wear us out, you just uh, get yourself a new hitch. It's probably the most maintainable SRT device. Just super wonderful. Oop, hanger. Thought that was a dead branch. You could set up such a fun recreational camp out here. Look at this. You have so many just regular hammocks. You don't even need tree boats or anything. Such a such a fun tree. Oh, how lovely. Oh, I don't remember if I put this on Instagram or not, but uh, this is the adjustable bridge I use with my tree motion. Not as great as using a Petzl Adjust like on my other saddle, but uh, you know, just some five mil Prusik cord that I tied through the webbing loops on the tree motion so uh, that it can kind of stay out of the way of my D's and uh, it, it, it kind of works. I wish the cord I used wasn't so stiff. It's some pretty stiff uh, Dyneema cord. I mean you gotta stuff a lot of stuff in there for it to be strong enough to do what it needs to do. But it's nice to be able to get the bridge short enough that this will just tend like right next to you, just like a belay loop on a rock climbing harness. So, usually I make a little retrieval loop that I kind of back splice into my rope doesn't add any structural integrity, doesn't necessarily remove it either, but my rope isn't quite long enough, so I have to reset my rope runner. Actually, maybe I'll just even uh, use double rope to get down to the ground, but we're just gonna have to put a knot in the end of the line to retrieve this, since I don't have a splice, or otherwise to uh, place a retrieval, retrieval ball on. Yeah, and I'm excited to use something like an all-in-one system like the ISC Squirrel Tether because one of the biggest qualms other people is that when you're using the rope wrench, it's kind of hard to like midline it like quickly in the tree. But with maybe the notch tether or the ISC tether, you know, it's going to be a lot quicker, especially if your Prusik combo is really reliable for you and you're able to switch it over pretty quickly. So I'm really excited to try that system out. This is why a tagline's nice, because using something thicker makes it a lot easier on your hands. And you're going to be able to pull a lot harder if it gets stuck. I'm just going to roll with an overhand knot and hope it doesn't come out. Also, I'm going to make sure I'm in a position to hop out of the way when this thing comes crashing down and hopefully it doesn't knock you guys out. Also really praying that I didn't put it through any unions that are going to catch that overhand knot and make this awfully difficult to retrieve. <laughs> I'm going to hide while this thing comes down. <laughs> Please don't hit me in the face. I like all of my teeth.
Oh, there we go. Oh boy, so much crap in my eye. Should have put the shield down. Ah! Oh, these are not the glasses for these cask shields. Whoa, there we go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh boy, you just got smoked with the steel ring. <laughs> oh. Are you okay? I've seen GoPros fall out of trees, so I think you're gonna be all right. But yeah, that went, that went really. Oh. There we go. Whew. So there you got it. Still through a lot of, this is a really bushy pine tree. It still retrieved that can of base anchor just fine. At the end there, the uh, GoPro died on me and ran out of battery, so I just kind of got that last little bit of the retrieval. Uh, I know these are pretty long videos, so let me know if any of you that are watching find that useful or if uh, you would like them to be a little bit more abbreviated. I know with some of the other uh, guys that are making fun material that can be educational or just entertainment. That some of them have 10 minute videos, some of them have 30 or 40 minute videos, but uh, I know that might have been kind of long. So let me know if you'd like to see shorter ones. I'd be happy to work harder to make abbreviated ones because you know, it takes more concentration to make the shorter ones. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun day of climbing today. I can't wait to get those splices brake tested. I'm gonna wait until I have the uh, Kern Master Phantom so that I can splice that and have it brake tested because I do want to climb on that. And uh, pretty much all of the other splices I climb on are ones that were basically manufacturer recommended. So I don't feel the need to test those. If I've ticked all the boxes and done it correctly, I feel I've replicated it as closely as it could be in any video or uh, uh, manufacturer specs, then I don't really care. But Kern Master is one of those things that doesn't have a recommended splice. And since it is a Kern Mantle rope and not classified as like a double braid rope, I don't feel comfortable just saying, oh, well, because it's basically a double braid, I can splice as a double braid and just be cool with that. So that one I would like to uh, have a brake test done on before I climb on my own splice. but. Having a spliced current mantle rope would be so sweet, and especially the uh, reliability and strength that a double braid has in its splice, since you retain everything. Whereas like with the adrenalized splice and stuff, uh, not 100% of the rope's material is retained throughout that eye. So excited to try splicing some Kern Master. I've heard it's horrible, but uh, we'll see. Uh, We'll see if I can get that done. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I will see you in hopefully one of those splicing videos. I'll be able to uh, start getting those out soon because I'm hoping to get those brake tested within the next uh, three weeks or so. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see how things break down. But yeah, thanks again. Bye.